uh, Facebook wants to uh, censor the word unionizing. So where does this come from? Uh, I read this is from The Intercept. That's where this, uh, this comes from. This comes from The Intercept. Uh, they launched a thing called Workspace recently, and it's very similar to like Slack, right? It's like an office tool. And Facebook does this quite often. They introduce like rooms, uh, which is which is supposed to be similar to Zoom, I guess. Um, they uh, Th their video platform is changing to the same way that YouTube does their video platforms, where it like automatically starts playing stuff in the background. There's a Facebook watch thing. So they're basically trying to like monopolize internet activity. They are trying to keep you on their site for as long as they possibly can. And look, people are already on Facebook forever. Like people just, I do this shit too. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm above this, but people will just like randomly scroll through Facebook, just looking at the same posts over and over again. It's like, oh yeah, okay, that's happening. That's happening. That's happening. And that's like people are already on the site. You don't need to create all this nonsensical bullshit uh, to, to, to keep more people on your fucking site. So this workplace thing is essentially like a way for people to be on Facebook while they're at work because they basically realized like, yeah, a lot of times, you know, we're, we're not doing shit. You know, we got to wait for these fucking reports to come through from another department and that department's too busy jacking themselves off and, or whatever the fuck. Like, I've been in a corporate environment and it's super, 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 like, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. Um, but it's like, it's just, I know that environment and it's, it's very, very aggravating. And so when you're waiting for a different department to get back to you about a thing, then yeah, we go on Facebook. Um, that's just what you do. It's like that's like that's like an open secret, right? It's like everybody's on Facebook at work. Okay, that's yeah, that's what we do, you know. So now they made this thing called Facebook Workspace, where you can just openly be on on Facebook at work, um, and you know, so like you don't get in trouble with the boss. There's a feature that lets administrators censor certain things that the company might deem as controversial. And this includes, the, uh, the, the example they gave was like, oh, I don't know, like if you, uh, if you want to censor the word unionize uh, was the example they gave. So it's like, oh, nobody gets to see anything that says unionize. Uh, and so everybody was just like, holy shit, did Facebook just come out and say that they don't want people to unionize? Like they're trying to censor anything that talks about unionization. That has that's that's saying anything good about unions, right? And people kind of freaked out about it, and it kind of makes sense because they're look who's using workspace, right? Uh, companies like Walmart are using workplace. The Singapore government is using workplace. Discovery Channel, Starbucks, Campbell's Soup, all these companies use workplace, and all of these companies uh, have been about union busting. They are not pro union companies. Right, so they're top tier fucking um, companies that use this product are sh are just fucking not. They're not. They're all union busters. So, like, of course, this makes sense. Uh, now, Karandeep Anand, who is the uh, product developer behind Workplace, came out and apologized, and he was like, "Hey, uh, you know, we misspoke. We shouldn't have given that example." Uh, whoopsie daisy, everything's fine. And we're all like, but, but not really, because you just kind of put the idea out there of just, like, other, like, other companies are definitely going to take that out. Like, are you shitting me? Like, Walmart's 100% going to take out the word unions with their, from their workplace app. For sure. For sure. And they already do so much for union busting. They, like, fucking show videos where they're just like, hey, don't join unions because a communist will come out and eat your baby. And it's just like, what? That's not even... I don't think you know how unions work. And they're like, we don't care. Communism. That's that's what it is. It's all about communism. And and America is great. Number one champion. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Roll back those prices. Here comes that weird smiley face. Like, that's, that's just what they do. So, right now, there's a split within Facebook. Right? There's a split within Facebook. The, the Facebook employees, the rank and file of Facebook are pushing back against the company 
Um, and, you know, uh, they're not pushing back about the company about, like, who's, like, a better actor, right? Is, is Jesse Eisenberg a better actor or is Andrew Garfield a better actor? Uh, the answer is Garfield. Andrew Garfield, better actor than Jesse Eisenberg. Uh, you can fight about it all day. I just, just yeah, I just, he's, he's fine. Jesse Eisenberg is whatever. Um, but <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're talking about how Facebook is operating as a company and kind of dictating what people get to see on their platform, right? That's what they're really arguing about. And, uh, the article, the Intercept article that I read, it said that they had a laissez-faire approach to political co to political content, which is super not true. Like they're very strict about making sure that certain political content doesn't get shown to certain people, right? Like um, there's there's a ton of stories about like my friend Lee Camp. My friend Lee Camp hasn't broken 336,000 th people on his Facebook page. Uh, because every time some a new person likes his page, somebody else gets taken off, and it just it just won't let him grow his page any further than that. Um, so it's like they don't have a laissez-faire approach to, to to data censorship. Like they have a very hard-lined approach to it. Uh, I can't remember exactly, what it, but it was like 2018, 2019, somewhere within that range. Uh, I think it was roughly seven or eight hundred. I don't know the numerics exactly. Uh, but a bunch of like alternative media pages just snap disappeared overnight. They didn't get a warning. They didn't break any community standard fucking rules or anything, right? They just disappeared. And it was left wing and right wing, but they were not CNN. It wasn't Fox News or MSNBC. They were like alternative news sites that are kind of powered by the people, right? They work on donations and sustaining memberships very similarly to, to me. So when that happened, I was just like, holy shit, is that going to happen to me? Because like, I don't have a huge page or anything, but you know, it is scary to think about because you're like, holy shit, is this going to happen to me? And, uh, you know, it, they, they, they like just disappeared. If you look at the Cambridge Analytica leaks, that proved that they're selling data and they're manipulating data for political campaigns. The Cambridge Analytica leaks basically found out that an American billionaire paid a British company that worked with Facebook to manipulate people's votes. That's what happened. That's what Cambridge Analytica proved. The Cambridge Analytica leaks proved, right? Uh, and, and we still, I mean, there's, there's barely anybody that fucking talks about this still. They don't have a laissez-faire approach to politics. They like certain stories. They want certain things. What keeps people on the site is not intelligent discourse and conversation, but rather people going up against the throats. So the more divisive you can be as a, uh, as a commentator or, or a news site or, or what have you, the better it is for fucking Facebook. Um, so, you know, that's the kind of stuff that they want. So if I'm trying to sit here and have this conversation about like, Hey, here's the information that we have. And this is what we, this is what I can, can extrapolate from this. And this is where I, the hypothesis that we can make, let's have a discussion about it. They don't want that kind of shit. They want me to come out and, and be like, Facebook is trying to kill unions. They're coming in. And they're using the robots. The robots are coming in there and they're punching union members in the dick. And then they're punching union presidents uh, up the urethra. That's what they're doing. They're using their urethra punching robots. And, and then everybody's like, what? This is crazy. You know, and then there's a battle between. And that keeps people more engaged in the site. They want that kind of shit. They want more divisiveness. So any channel that doesn't promote that kind of divisiveness... That, that and, and speaks about facts and calls them out on their own bullshit and doesn't, uh, you know, kind of addresses the technocracy for what it is, they get deleted off the site. They also have a, a program, this is fucking hilarious, they have a program called American Edge, 
uh, which is a dark money venture that's supposed to be more forceful on lawmakers about regulation to Facebook itself. Which is fuck nuts to me. It's fuck nuts. Like, how crazy is that? You have a dark called American Edge. Uh, just the American Edge. Like, how macho shit do you need to be? But this is what they are, man. They're a company that's, that, you know, they're, they're trying to make money and they're trying to control data. That's what they're doing. And they, uh, they don't want democratization in the workplace. Because if now, if people are scrolling through Facebook at work, and a company that they've partnered with is like, hey, we don't want people to see shit about unionization. We don't want people to see things about Bernie Sanders. We don't want people to see things about socialism um, or whatever, or third parties uh, or anything from Fox News or anything from a conservative site. I mean, this that's censorship in, on a massive, massive scale. And Facebook gets to allow them to do that. It, it lets other corporations do that. So then, then corporations can basically pay Facebook to give them more authoritarian control over what people get to see and don't see on Facebook. So, uh, yeah, keep your eye out on that. Hey, folks. Uh, thank you so much for checking out this, uh, this video. Thank you very much for tuning into this channel. If you enjoyed the video, uh, if you like what you see here, please give it a thumbs up and share this out with whoever you think would benefit from this. Share it with your friends, your family, your enemies, whoever you think needs to, to, to watch uh, content like this. And uh, I'm also going to be doing uh, live virtual stand-up comedy shows via Zoom. Uh, called the Citizen Revolution Comedy Shows. There, tickets are available for those right now. Uh, you got to get your tickets, and 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 you got to get them as soon as you possibly can. Uh, for two reasons: one, that's how I'm going to be able to communicate the login information to you guys. That way, we don't have any unwanted visitors showing up in the uh, in the virtual theater, the Zoom virtual theater. Uh, and, uh, and and I'm just one man, and it's very difficult to keep track of uh, a bunch of different people that I need to give tickets out to. So uh, that's how I'm going to be able to communicate the, the login information as efficiently as possible. The second reason to get them quickly, too, is because they're limited spots, uh, and half the ticket sales are going to help a uh, grassroots organization, venue, journalists, uh, and so on and so forth. Every every single week, it's a brand new show, and every single week, we have a brand new grassroots organization or venue or journalist or, uh, that uh, we are going to be donating half those ticket sales to. So um, if you want to be a part of that, uh, please get those tickets as soon as you can. And uh, you can you can make a one-time donation, you can or you can become a sustaining member uh, by going to my website krishmohan.com as well k r i s h m o h a n dot com. Uh, you can uh, you can become a sustaining member via Patreon uh, over Bandcamp or directly on my website. That gets you free tickets to some of these live virtual stand-up comedy shows. It gets you unreleased stand-up comedy material. It gets early access to uh, my web series, Forkful of Noodles, the extended big long episodes of, of that. Um, you also get, if you miss a Citizen Revolution show, don't, we got you. We're, we'll, we put those up for our patrons and uh, our sustaining members to check out. So I hope you guys can, uh, if, you, if you have the ability to make a donation, you do. If you have the ability to become a sustaining member, that you do. But the important thing is to make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to this stuff because content like this often doesn't get shown to the maximum number of people. So I depend very much on you guys to get the word out there. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the people that do tune in, uh, that have become patrons, that have made donations, that buy these tickets. You guys are fucking awesome. Uh, it's it sure as hell helping me out, uh, uh, you know, in in this tough time, and uh, and it's helping me continue produce these shows uh, at the at a, at a higher quality than um, than before, and and keep pushing uh, to create to create these these videos to the best of uh, to the best of my ability and add you know the the, the cooler bells and whistles to it. Um, I'm the only person that works on these shows. I'm, I'm doing all this stuff. So uh, every every little bit, every every sustaining member and every ticket sale totally, totally fucking helps out. Um, and I appreciate the hell out of it. Thank you so much. And we'll see you at the next video.